Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Biodiesel Magazine's webinar, New Advances in Detection Technologies for Biodiesel Impurities. Today's webinar is sponsored by Spectro Analytical Instruments, a division of Amatech. My name is Ron Cutterba. I'm the editor of Biodiesel Magazine, and we're happy to have you with, with us this morning. With the biodiesel industry relying more and more on lower cost, lower quality feedstock, coupled with the increasing sensitivity of new diesel technologies, fuel quality is more important now than ever before. <clears throat> fuel specifications continue to lower the allowable concentrations of biodiesel impurities, and some companies dictate even lower levels in their purchase requirements. As a result, the ability to accurately and consistently detect trace concentrations of these critical elements is vital to supplying high-quality fuel the marketplace demands. Our speakers today will discuss advances in detection technology to help biodiesel producers meet those demands. A quick note before we begin with the presentations, if you have a question for our speakers, please type it into the panel on the right side of your screen during or after their presentations. After both speakers have presented, I will be reading the questions to our panelists, and we hope to get to as many of them as possible during our Q&A session later in our broadcast. If your question is for a specific speaker, please indicate that. Also, type your question in a manner in which it can be easily read, considering I will be reading them to our experts. Now, before we begin, let's pause for a word from our sponsor. Part of Amatech's Material Analysis Division, Spectral Analytical Instruments is a manufacturer of advanced spectroscopic solutions for elemental analysis in a broad range of instrument applications. Elemental analysis continues to develop at a fast pace worldwide. It demands high precision and other complex system requirements for even routine operations. Spectro is at the forefront of progress in this field with numerous innovative solutions. Founded in 1979 as a three-person enterprise, Spectro today counts over 400 employees around the world. It's acknowledged as the clear market leader in metal analysis. And the company's growth and sales of general ICP and XRF spectrometers also exceeds industry averages. Since its inception, Spectro has delivered more than 40,000 instruments to organizations large and small across the globe. Examples include everything from handheld spectrometers for metal recycling to fully automatic sample preparation and analysis systems for process control in many different industries. The company takes pride in helping provide increased safety and superior analytical measurements for its customers. That includes biofuels customers. Spectro advances in ICP and XRF technology have improved analytical performance and other capabilities for testing biofuels samples. For Spectro ICP instruments in particular, eliminating external chillers and reducing argon gas consumption have also reduced downtime and dramatically cut operating costs. For more information, please go to www.spectro.com. I'm pleased to welcome our speakers this morning, Meredith Daniel Prouse and Olaf Schultz. Meredith is an application scientist for Spectro Analytical Instruments for its X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy product line. She holds a doctoral degree in analytical chemistry from Wake Forest University. Meredith has a strong background in analytical instrumentation, including elemental analysis via XRF and inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectrometry, vibrational spectroscopy, including laser photoacoustic spectroscopy, and various sample preparation methodologies. In her current position, she works closely with customers from various industries, supporting them to solve their analytical needs through method, developmental, and sample preparation. Olaf Schultz is the product manager for ICP OES and is responsible for the strategic development of the complete product line, including application development 
and product support. Olaf's experience in optical emission spectroscopy for materials analysis and testing spans more than 30 years. With an engineering degree in physics, uh, he started his career in the auto industry initially at Robert Bosch and then at the automaker Porsche. Olaf moved to Spectra Analytical Instruments in 1989 with assignments in application development, sales, and marketing. Meredith and Olaf, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, and thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar on advanced elemental analysis of biofuels. Today, we will discuss how elemental analysis can be accomplished using both energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence and inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy. Spectroanalytical Instruments is a leading manufacturer for, for analytical instrumentation specifically designed for elemental analysis. Spectro's products include ArcSpark Optical Emission Spectroscopy, ICPOES, ICPMS, and Energy Dispersive X-ray Fluorescence. With a vast diversity of products, Spectro instrumentation is used in a wide variety of industries, such as petroleum, pharmaceutical, metal production and recycling, and environmental analysis. Spectro is a business unit within Amatex Material Analysis Division. Spectro has far-reaching global presence with our headquarters and manufacturing facility in Kleva, Germany. The United States hosts the NAFTA Regional Center office, which is located in Mawa, New Jersey, and a West Coast Demonstration Laboratory located in Irvine, California. Through subsidiaries, subsidiaries and distributors, Spectro is easily accessible worldwide. Today's webinar will cover the motivation behind the need for elemental analysis of biofuels. We will review standards and norms that have been developed for both fuels and biofuels. Then we will discuss specific applications where energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence and ICPOES are ideal for the analysis of these biofuels. The use of biofuels and renewable fuels continue to grow as a source of automotive fuels. Since biofuels are produced from natural sources, there are several advantages, such as improving environmental conditions, being sustainable, and provides energy security. Currently, fatty acid methyl esters, or FAME, is derived from vegetable oil and is blended with regular diesel. The source of the vegetable oil can be fresh oil or recycled vegetable oil from the food industry. The manufacturing of biofuels requires close analysis of its composition. It is generally necessary to monitor the levels of sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. These elements can form undesirable compounds, resulting in engine failure. These elements also can affect the performance and control of emission and catalytic conversion converter systems. As a result, they may be subject to regulation. The analysis of sulfur is important from a regulatory standpoint, as in the case with all fuels. If the vegetable oil used for the biofuel is the recycled oil from the food industry rather than the fresh oil, the need for chlorine analysis may be of importance. Regulations and standards have made it increasingly important for manufacturers of fatty acid methyl esters to monitor and test the elemental compositions of their product quality. Only materials and products that conform with these specifications can be distributed. Some of the norms and specifications that are relevant to fuel blends, fame, and vegetable oils are listed here.
Test methods that are specific to the application of biofuels include the EN14538 for calcium, potassium, magnesium, and sodium in FAME, and the EN62294 for the analysis of phosphorus. Both of these test methods describe the analysis by ICP OES. As noted here, both of these methods require some dilutions in order to reduce matrix effects. Sulfur, however, is not covered by these two methods. Instead, sulfur is determined by different techniques, such as X-ray fluorescence. EN 1032 and ASTM D7220 both describe methods for the analysis of sulfur content by energy dispersive XRF. It is with this analysis, analysis that we will begin our discussion of EDXRF for the analysis of biofuels. One of the main advantages of X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy is the simplicity of sample preparation. For liquid samples, such as biofuels, it is as easy as filling a prepared disposable XRF sample cup. Such an extra energy dispersive XRF system, as shown here, the SpectroZipos, is capable of measuring low levels of sulfur and meets the requirements of both EN 13032 and ASTM D7720 methods. The Spectro Z post employs a 50 kV 50 watt palladium cobalt binary alloy X ray tube with a high count rate SDD detection system. The binary tube offers the ability to use either palladium or cobalt X ray energy for excitation. This combined with polarized excitation and bandpass filter optics provides high sensitivity and low limits of detection across the periodic table. In addition to analyzing sulfur, the unit has the ability to screen for other important trace elements such as sodium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and chlorine. Using backscatter information from the sample spectra, the unit can provide an estimate of oxygen content, which can provide proof that the material is based on esters. Energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence is an excellent technique for the analysis of sulfur in fuels and biofuels. Sulfur content is, pos is possible even at low concentrations, less than 10 ppm, for this study, four grams of sample were poured into a sample cup with an outer diameter of 32 millimeters. The sample cup used four micron polypropylene film for the analytical window. For additional safety, the cups were placed into a sample holder with a secondary polypropylene film. As described in EN 590, biodiesel blends can be analyzed against a calibration prepared for diesel fuels. However, the same calibration for the analysis of biofuel samples with a 12.5% oxygen content would lead to significant bias in the analysis of the results. Oxygen introduces a matrix effect on the sulfur signal using XRF. This is demonstrated in the plot shown. The blue dots indicate the sulfur standards at 0, 5, 10, 25, and 50 parts per million in mineral oil. When samples of the same concentrations are prepared now in a biofuel containing 12.5% oxygen, shown in the orange, it is clear to see the bias is created. There are different approaches that can be employed to correct for this matrix effect. Two of the approaches listed here are the use of, correct, of correction factors or the use of matrix match standards. If the oxygen content is consistent, then for example, the orange calibration that is shown here could be used. However, for both of these methods of correction, there needs to be a prior knowledge of the oxygen content in the sample. And when analyzing unknown samples, this may not be known.
A third approach would be to indirectly measure the oxygen content using the backscatter information from the sample spectra. In order for this to work accurately, the energy of the Compton scatter signal must be relatively low energy, so as not to be affected by volume effects, which can also alter the determination. The spectro ZPOS employs the use of the palladium cobalt binary X-ray tube. Therefore, using the Compton scatter generated from the cobalt excitation leads to very good accuracy. This plot demonstrates the sensitivity and accuracy for this indirect determination of oxygen content. Based on this data, it is possible to differentiate between a FAM, FAME, or mineral oil sample. For the accurate determination of other trace elements, the oxygen content procedure is used in conjunction with fundamental parameters. Here are some results using the indirect oxygen content matrix correction method. Several samples with known oxygen content and known sulfur content were analyzed against the prepared calibration. The sulfur values obtained are very close to the known values. Whether it is a diesel with no oxygen or a 12% oxygen biofuel sample, the results compare very nicely for the sulfur content. Lastly, in addition to the analysis of sulfur, energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence has the ability to screen for other elements that may be present in the sample. Some elements that are of interest might include phosphorus, potassium, chlorine, magnesium, and sodium. These elements can be harmful to the automotive engines or emission controls. Recycled vegetable oils that cannot be added into diesel fuel may be used as a secondary burner fuel. For this application, it's important to show the absence of toxic elements such as lead and cadmium as a quality control. A screening of these toxic elements can be done using the same analysis. The limits of detection for the spectro ZPOS and oil are shown to demonstrate the analytical capabilities. Energy dispersive XRF is a cost-effective, easy-to-use technique for the analysis of sulfur and provides the capability to screen samples for a variety of other elements that may be present in the samples. At this point, I'm going to turn over the pre presentation to Olaf, who will be discussing the analysis of biofuels by ICP OES. Well, thank you very much, Meredith. And so let's move to the next slide and to the ICP OES. Well, the ICP OES is a very versatile technique since many elements can be analyzed and it is sensitive. Uh, it has, in fact, a very high sensitivity. It is a standard method for the analysis of organic substances. As for liquid samples, often a very simple dilution with a suitable solvent is sufficient to introduce the liquid sample directly into the argon plasma. The spectral portfolio of instruments consists of three ICPs, which with their performance are tailored for particular applications. And in the following, I would like to present three examples demonstrating the individual capabilities of each instrument. Now, the spectrogenesis is a very cost-efficient solution. The instrument has been particularly designed for standard industrial analytical tasks, which do not require the highest sensitivity, but a simple and easy-to-use instrument. Definitely an alternative for everybody who still uses a flame atomic absorption spectrometer or an older sequential ICP. Uh, the instrument offers a real fast simultaneous detection, and so um, also more substantial numbers of elements and samples can be processed in a short time. Uh, among the principal advantages compared to the FAA methods uh, are the freedom from matrix interferences, uh, the capability to also determine non-metals, uh, but also the possibility to operate the instrument unattended as it uses no flammable gases. Now for the 
production of biodiesel, the control of phosphorus and sulfur, as well as to some parameters, sodium and potassium and magnesium and calcium are important, as exceeding limits leads to engine damage, high temperature corrosion on engine parts or the formation of soap deposits. An ideal application for the spectrogenesis, since only few elements need to be determined and the limits to be controlled are not particularly low. The only challenge presents the determination of sodium, since the emission line at 589 nanometers is affected by a neighboring carbon band, which negatively influences the limit of detection. However, a rather simple technique to eliminate this interference exists. Certainly important for the accurate determination of lower sodium concentrations is to avoid any sample preparation related contamination for which reasons the vials uh, to be used should, for the test should be cleaned prior to using them. Otherwise, the samples are simply diluted one to two uh, using base oil and kerosene. And to eliminate dimension interference, oxygen was added to the nebulizer gas. In addition, also argon can be added to cool the plasma and thus further enhance the excitation conditions for the alkali elements. Now, the graphic here shows the spectral background at 589 nanometers with the uh, carbon molecular background on the right side of the sodium emission line. And by adding oxygen to the argon gas, this background can be completely eliminated. Uh, the signal can further be enhanced by cooling the plasma, which, for example, can be achieved by the addition of additional argon to the aerosol flow. And this improves the signal to background ratio by a factor of up to 10. Limits of detection obtained for this application using the spectrogenesis show that the instrument has all the capabilities for the analysis of biodiesel, a real cost-efficient multi-element analysis solution, which is capable for more. For more challenging work where higher sensitivity is needed or in case of applications which uh, require detection of uh, uh, samples in a kind of line richer matrix, the Spectra Blue is the instrument of choice. Uh, with its direct light path Orca optical uh, design, the system provides a real excellent uh, resolution of 8 picometers in the wavelength range between 165 and 285 nanometers and 16 picometers in the wavelength range above, which combined with the instrument's interface technology enables uh, the highest sensitivity. Latest LDMOS generator technology make the instrument then also very suitable for higher matrix work or for the uh, analysis of organic matrix samples. To summarize, a uh, workhorse instrument with an excellent price to performance ratio, which expands beyond the instrument costs only. UV plus, uh, spectral proprietary technology uh, for an oxygen water vapor free light path to enable the light detection in the UV spectral range consumes absolutely no gas and saves really thousands of uh, dollars per year. And the same also applies to the instrument's cooling concept. The instrument is fully air-cooled. The instrument requires no external cooling system, which in addition to the purchasing cost of such a system really improves the operational safety since leaks and instrument damage as a result of this, as well as the downtime can be avoided. Now, the analysis of samples from biogas fermenter presents a challenge in many aspects, as the samples can be very different depending on the source. Um, they can be very inhomogeneous, uh, uh, which makes an accurate determination uh, difficult. Samples uh, must definitely be dried before the preparation, which makes also the whole process extremely time consuming. And also the analytical requirements are higher certain elements molybdenum and selenium uh, in particular, uh, require limits which using traditional preparation techniques can only be achieved using ICPMS and thus basically two techniques, uh, ICP, OES and MS, uh, are required for the analysis of one sample. Now the analysis of such samples uh, using the Spectra Blue was enabled since in addition to the instrument's uh, really excellent matrix compatibility capabilities, uh, newly introduced sample preparation instrumentation could be used. Uh, compared to a standard vacuum dryer, uh, the uh, 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 microwave dryer uh, was employed, which enables uh, the drying of up to six samples within 10 minutes. 
and for the digestion, a CEM Discover uh, microwave digestion system was used, which enables sample weights of organic substances in the excess of one gram and more, and therefore much, much lower sample dilutions. Now for the test, the results uh, of uh, liquid and dry samples were compared. Uh, for both sample types, uh, the digestion conditions uh, uh, were rather similar. And after the digestion, uh, which only required 10 minutes, uh, uh, the samples were diluted to 20 milliliters, and then the samples were directly analyzed using the ICP OES. Um, ICP operating condition-wise to cater for the highest matrix load, uh, a higher plasma power of uh, 1450 watt was applied. Other than this, standard parameters were used for fast washout, a cyclonic spray chamber with a uh, concentric nebulizer, uh, uh, which also provides the highest sensitivity was, uh, sensitivity was installed. Now the slide here demonstrates the sensitivity of the spectra blue with a radial plasma observation. And as you can see here, uh, even PPB level concentrations of molybdenum uh, produce a real visible signal. And the same also applies uh, for selenium. Here the concentration is even lower with 20 microgram per liter. And also here we still have a visible signal. So it's not just measurable, it's really, vis uh, it's really visible. So the comparison of the dried and the liquid samples uh, demonstrated that the drying prior to the digestion definitely improves the analytical result as um, a much, much better sample homogeneity can be achieved. Uh, we can see this here very, very nicely. And so uh, the overall advantage of this method is clearly uh, the uh, improved speed uh, where it is really up to 10 times faster compared to the traditional methods. Uh, a higher sample weight is now possible with recently introduced sample preparation equipment. And uh, the five times higher sensitivity as a result of the lower dilution of the sample and, uh, and also possible due to the excellent capabilities of the Spectra SPI, a dedicated direct light path radial observation of the plasma, uh, which is particularly suited uh, for the uh, samples with higher matrix content or the analysis of uh, organic samples. So the advantages for the users here are clear. It's higher speeds, a better homogeneity of the samples, and uh, the use of a single instrument, and thus uh, lower costs and, uh, and uh, higher analysis quality. Now, the Spectra Arcos, our high-end instrument, really fulfills the highest demands in terms of all aspects. Uh, in contrast to conventional systems, the Arcos uses a pagen rongue mount optical system. Uh, the Orca concept includes here three polychromators in one optical system, which simultaneously captures the wavelength range between 130 and 770 nanometers. Transparency in the UV and VUV is achieved without purging the optic, uh, but by filling the system with argon and, and the adaptation of a gas cleaning device we call UV+. Plus. Um, also uh, for the Arcos, um, above all, it's the unique robustness uh, of the LDMOS generator, uh, the radial plasma interface uh, that is perfectly matched to organic applications as well as a simultaneous uh, capturing optical system uh, with high stability and high resolution and sensitivity, which enable, enables the performance shown. And the next example here is the, the direct analysis of uh, E75 and E85 gasoline. Now here for the sample uh, introduction of gasoline, a cyclonic spray chamber and a micro mist nebulizer uh, was used uh, with a fixed torch and a 1.2 millimeter injector. Uh, the nebulizer enables a lower sample delivery rate of 200 microliter per minute and also the smaller injector diameter was used to limit the amount of sample which reaches the plasma. And still a lot of sample reaches the plasma and therefore um, a higher plasma power was adjusted, 1650 watt, uh, to cater for this higher load and uh, then to prevent carbon deposits in the torch, um, a higher auxiliary uh, gas flow was also adjusted with two liters per minute. And in addition to that, oxygen was also added to the auxiliary gas with a flow rate of 0.05 liters per minute. 
Now, a spectral arcos with uh, radial plasma observation was used, and the samples were gravimetrically diluted one to one with kerosene. And in addition, an internal standard here was used to compensate for sample transport density and viscosity differences. And the calibration was performed here using uh, Conestan oil standards, which were also diluted one to one uh, with gasoline and kerosene. Now, certainly the analysis of gasoline at room temperature, uh, normal pneumatic uh, sample aspiration without cooling the sample induction system defines the currently technical feasible uh, technology. But what you can see here, despite the really enormous plasma load uh, we have, the results uh, are really impressive. Uh, the calibration, which are shown here on this uh, slide, they really show an excellent linearity and also an excellent correlation. Well, also uh, fairly good sensitivity with detection limits, mostly in the one and two digit PBB range uh, was determined. And uh, the same applies also to precision and accuracy uh, for a tenfold measurement of the uh, blank RSDs between 0.5 and 1.5% uh, uh, were determined. And also recoveries for a blank sample spiked with uh, uh, a concentration of 190 microgram per kilogram uh, recoveries were excellent um, in the range of 100% plus minus 5%. Well, certainly the question also arises, how stable is it over time? Is it really a, a method and uh, um, uh, which can be used in routine? And to verify this, we did a long-term stability test with the sample spiked with a concentration of 400 microgram per kilogram. And that was measured every four minutes over a period of four hours uh, without recalibration or standardization of the instrument. And the test here shows really an excellent stability um, with a variation of less than 4%. And uh, certainly over this period of time, uh, we also had no drift at all. So with this, I already come to the end of my talk. So let me summarize. Uh, manufacturing biofuels requires really a close control of the trace metal content as they may contain potentially harmful elements for, el for engines or elements that may be subject to environmental control. And also for an effective production uh, of biofuels, the control of elements is important. Uh, for both uh, EDXRF and uh, ICP OAS, there are effective methods uh, available for these analytical tasks. Uh, and also ISO, EN, and ASTM methods are available. Now, for the EDEXRF, uh, this is a particular easy technology to apply as the sample requires little sample preparation. It only needs to be filled into a prepared sample cup. And this technology can be used to analyze uh, sulfur, and it also can be used for the screening of the uh, trace metal content. And even oxygen uh, uh, can be determined in the sample, and that can be used uh, to estimate um, um, and to prove uh, whether the material is based on esters. And last but not least, uh, with the capability to simultaneously measure a lot of elements, up to 70 elements, and uh, really the high sensitivity also for light elements, uh, nonmetals and halogens, ICP OAS is really a standard technique for the analysis of biofuels. The technique is very fast uh, and also very precise, and it requires little sample preparation. Mostly samples only need to be diluted with kerosene, uh, which is a, a typical method really for uh, liquid samples. And that can even be fully automated along with the measurement of the sample. And so uh, in such an automated system, um, um, uh, 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 it can even analyze up to 1,000 samples per day. So, and with that, I'm at the end of my talk. I thank you very much uh, for your uh, participation. And I think we have uh, time for questions. And uh, with that, I would like to give the microphone hey, back uh, to the presenter. Hey, th th thank you very much, Olaf. Uh, nice job. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, we do have uh, a few questions in the queue, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, first question is, uh, we, we run high purity feedstock biodiesel uh, with phosphorus, sodium, and potassium at uh, uh, one to five parts per million in the oil. Uh, we, we cannot do this on our current ICP. Can it be done on the spectro? 
Well, yes, it can. It can be done. Uh, it requires two things. Uh, to determine low-level phosphorus, you do need a spectrometer, uh, which provides you a higher sensitivity in the UV spectral range. And uh, that is definitely a spectrometer uh, with a Pagenrunge optical design, as uh, this technology is particularly capable in this uh, spectral range. And uh, with this kind of uh, um, the setup, uh, it is uh, very well possible to analyze uh, below PBB, below, below PPM level uh, phosphorus in the sample. I think for uh, low level sodium, um, I mentioned that in my talk, uh, there are various ways uh, to, to further improve the limits of detection uh, for uh, sodium. And one is to eliminate uh, um, carbon related interferences, and the other is to further increase the sensitivity uh, by, by cooling the plasma. Thank you, Olaf. Uh, next question. Um, our system is a dual view, and we are constantly cleaning the torch every six hours. How often is the torch cleaned on your system? Uh, a typical cycle would be about once a week. Um, next question. We use a nitrogen plasma system. We struggle with phosphorus at low levels. What is your system able? Why is your system able to do this better? Uh, well, I mean, the answer is very easy. I mean, with uh, a, a nitrogen or air-based microwave plasma, uh, plasma temperatures are not particularly high, and uh, so the system is not really capable of uh, of exciting the uh, uh, more sensitive ionic lines, and uh, that's a possibility and a capability we have with ICP, or one has with ICP in general, and for that reason, uh, metals in particular uh, but also non-metals uh, can be determined with higher sensitivity using ICP OES. Uh, next question. What type of X-ray tube is used in the system? Um, on our uh, Spectro Z post, we use a um, palladium cobalt binary alloy X-ray tube. Um, it's a very unique tube and it allows us to have multiple lines of excitation that basically provide more efficient excitation for different groups um, of elements across the periodic table. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, next question. What is the detection limit of sulfur in fuels using XRF? Using an XRF um, such as the Z-Post um, with the polarization optics, um, we are able to achieve, achieve detection limits less than 0.3 ppm um, sulfur in the oil. So we're able to quantify at um, very at single digit um, ppm levels. Wow, that's that's pretty low. Um, but uh, next question here: uh, By XRF, do you need to correct all elements for the matrix effect caused by oxygen? Yes, yeah, so if you're analyzing the biofuels um, and you are looking for all of the other elements that may be present um, in the sample besides just the sulfur, you would need to correct all of those as I showed for the sulfur. Yeah. Well, that's uh, looks like that's all the questions we have now. Uh, uh, if you, if uh, anyone in attendance uh, has any questions, we certainly encourage you to reach out to, to Olaf uh, and or Meredith. Uh, and, and at this time, I'd like to once again thank our panelists and a special thank you to our sponsor, Spectro Analytical Instruments, a division of Amatec. Uh, for those of you on the call, we have an exclusive discount. Uh, you can uh, receive $200 off the full conference rate for the Advanced Biofuels Conference next month in Omaha, Nebraska. June 11th through June 13th. Give us a call at 866-746-8385 and mention the discount code ABCLATE. Finally, we'd like to tell you about a couple of upcoming BBI International events we have scheduled next month in Omaha. Uh, the Efficient Ethanol Production Seminar will be held June 11th. Also in Omaha, June 11th, we have our annual Ethanol 101 pre-conference seminar as a prelude to the International Fuel Ethanol Workshop and Expo June 11th through June 13th. 
which is co-located with the Advanced Biofuels Conference, also in Omaha on those same dates. Remember, as a registrant of this broadcast, you can use your discount code ABCLATE to get $200 off the full registration rate for the Advanced Biofuels Conference. We look forward to seeing you at these events. Uh, and we'd like to thank you once again for joining us today, and a special thank you to those in attendance, our speakers, and our sponsor, Spectro Analytical Instruments, a division of Amatech. For Biodiesel Magazine, I'm Ron Kotterba, and this broadcast is now concluding. Thank you.